Okay, this is my classic round two game yesterday against I think a Polish I am P P Cola P C O L A and he's been playing the French defence since about six years old and you can tell from this game I think. I prepared something using Watson's dangerous weapons in the French book. Um on the white side I'm not so sure about this particular dangerous weapon um being so so great. I was very optimistic. It's called breaking the chain. I was optimistic this um, idea might be free, which provokes Black to play c4. I was hoping he'd play c4, um, but then White can then play bishop e2, knight f1 to e3, and get a good game later because Black has released the tension. And he said, you know, basically, why would he play that? Why would he release the tension? Um, so he played, you know, maybe a more logical move, but. Um, I'd also check this this system out on chess games common. It seemed to have good statistics overall, but it's not mainline, and it's probably not mainline for a reason that um, you know m maybe the wins that have occurred in the system uh, were not that convincing. You know, maybe there's better ways to play against it. But as a surprise weapon, I thought it might have some value. And on the way there, I was um, I actually bumped into an IM Lawrence Cooper on the train, and he was going over some some of the stuff for me. And uh, I was looking at some side variations, but I didn't consider b6, which is what uh, my IM opponent played. So I was the one a bit surprised here. I thought, hold on, I can play it like Quillen played it against me. But um, I think Quillen was worse in the British Championship like two years ago by playing dc and c4. But still, I thought, you know, for some reason, for some weird reason, I thought, well, maybe it's worth getting, you know, trying to get e4 control. But I think it just gives Black a good game. And according to Ribker, it's equal now. After this continuation to play c4, d4, it's actually nearly dead equal. A more critical, or even you know, better for Black is giving. So if Black solved the, the light squared bishop problem, actually with a vengeance on this diagonal, then Black, I suppose, must be better. Um, so, so really more critical is what my, my own opponent mentioned, c4. But there's there's really a lot of precision needed here. For example, so say this line. It looks as I'm I'm, I'm loose, and and it, Ribka changes its assessment based on White's control of c5 to stop this potential bishop c5 check happening. So for example, knight bd4 gets White nothing in this kind of continuation. With you know bishop e2, it's virtually nothing. Or knight takes c c6. You know it's no big deal here. Because you know bishop c5 check, and if white hasn't got you know the bishop on e3, this bishop's passive; it can't go to e3, right? I just want to compare you this variation with the knight with knight f takes d4, where this apparently does give white some advantage because this knight on b3 is controlling c5. So the same, almost the same looking variation, but without bishop c5 check, if the rook moves now. Apparently, there's an advantage for white after bishop e3. Uh, for example, b quick queen, you know, bishop here, rook here, and white can claim a small edge. So, I didn't know about you know the different knight moves or whatever. I mean, I didn't look at this with rib because I had to reinstall my operating system. So that's the thing. Although I could check this novelty with chess games, come statistically, also chess live de, I could not check with an engine uh, yesterday. But um, B6, I suppose I should have considered because he has played B6 in some of his other French defence games, which I which I checked up. Um, I mean, he hasn't been playing for a few years, but he used to be, in fact, higher than 2360. He was at one point up to 2470, and he was drawing with or, with quite a few GMs in his heyday. Apparently, he was like 21, 2470. He gave up chess because there were just people better than him, and he wanted to get a normal job. So doesn't matter what level you are it seems there's always um it's a very difficult game to to make any money from and um you know when he was 21 24 70 i think that's it's quite a prodigy really but anyway his his fluency of the french defense seems undiminished despite having not played for a while and definitely the way i played this i've, I've solved his light square bishop problem he's clamping down on me ever playing f5 i don't think i could have rushed in with f5 here i'm just going to get blasted through the center so I have to like try and um, prepare f5 later. Problem is, look, this, this this knight's not brilliant. I should try and get the knight back to e4 as soon as possible. And instead, I start faffing around with this kind of vague plan of knight c1, 
uh, bishop e4, knight d3, because I, I was remembering this, this Nigel Short versus Kathy Forbes game on the TV, where Nigel had a great knight on d3. The problem is, in this particular position, c4 is vulnerable, and he really exploits the fact that c4 is a real pain for me, potentially. So queen e1, as though castling queenside, I'd discourage it because of knight a5. So he plays a5, and he, he clamps down on my queenside, and the knight's now stumbling around, and I waste the tempo now with bishop e4, because he just I've loosened c4. So I'm trying to copy an idea I've seen on TV, but you know there's a c4 problem here in my concrete position. So instead of bishop here, I mean it's already starting to look bad, but I can try and reroute the knight. For example, knight e2, knight a5. At least the knight is is you know can get to e4 here. And okay, so so we can get this this manoeuvre in, but this this will be much better than the game continuation. It's a logical plan, just to get the knight e4, which is which is what I was worried about in the Quillen game two years ago. So I'm not playing the strategic tools which you know destroyed me two years ago. Instead, I'm playing a totally poxy plan of leaving this knight without any prospects, and that becomes the basis for a very powerful and logical positional sacrifice. In fact, you could argue it's not really a sacrifice, what he played later, to really exploit this kind of undeveloped queenside configuration, especially this, this pathetic knight on c1. So I wasn't really all there for some reason, and I did get a good night's sleep before this game. I went to bed really early um, the night before, and so I'd done my homework with Watson's book. But, you know, maybe, you know, he just surprised me a bit, I suppose, with the b6. And gave me this uneasy feeling that he'd be comfortable with the position. So now g4, he thought that was a good chance, a good try. But really, he just plays f6 and he gets a fantastic game just sacking e6 now. So I take on e6 and I, I miss a critical move here. There's a critical tactical move. So despite, I know, positionally getting stuffed on the queen side. There's a move here which might give White a glimmer of hope, which is knight h4 immediately, with the idea of threatening to sacrifice on g6. So if he has to play knight e7, maybe I can survive a bit longer. And there's a, some technical moves now which might help solve problems like b4. So that's by and by, that's computer precision. There's knight h4. I only later discovered knight h4 as a possibility. I play queen h3, um, and I had this idea that a very optimistic idea while while he was um um like thinking for a long time here after i played queen g2 i really had not considered at all him just casually carrying on to attack c4 i was just hoping for bishop f5 because i thought for some reason he'd want to set up a blockade on f5 to stop knight h4 and f5 so i was really expecting bishop f5 but then i would take and maybe consider knight h4 but i think it's still just better for black here, but maybe not not that much better. What he played is a lot more incisive. He just played the very incisive bishop e6. So he's really just using that positional sack to really emphasize this chronic problem on the queen side, this congestion. And he, this knight in particular. So is is just I'm losing games because of knights recently, because I, I lost another game recently because of a poor knight. Once you get a poor knight, it's it's like um strategically you know very bad you know lost you could say i'm not saying I mean, it's like equating knights and, and king position and pawn structure to the same level because the knight it does take a long time to fix if you've got a knight which is you know stranded or something or dominated you can just lose the game because of that so here i, I still desperately play f f5 and i'm getting stuffed basically knight e5 there's just too much pressure and i'm not even properly developed so it just shows I've just I've just left my knight completely out of the game, and he's just playing very accurately. And I even miss bishop f4 because the rook on a8 means rook f5 is not possible. But even, so I just I just quickly collapse here with knight g7 instead. Knight takes g7. So he just takes on f1. I take with the queen. He just takes on d2 now. And the thing is, um, well in in this position. Um, what was I vaguely hoping for? There was some vague hope I had of of saving this. No, no, of not losing material instantly. Um, 
but I can't think of it at the moment. Uh, knight takes g7. If he had played, um, I think no, it's it's just dire. He's basically coming into f3 anyway, so I resign here. I just resign. Um, oh, that's that's it. I haven't got knight e6 because I thought yeah, knight e6, knight takes. If he does knight takes, then I'm only like losing a bit rather than just losing instantly. Um, but in fact, he's got knight f3 check here. And that's completely killing because he's on h2. So if I move my king, he's going to take on h2 and then take my queen. So that was a slight technical snag, but it was a strategic.